I uh, would like to greet everybody that is watching this video. My name is uh, Moses Macheke. I'm a lecturer. I'm lecturing business management two. Um, well, in business management two, we got two modules. First module is uh, on financial management. Second module is project management, of which is what we basically be lecturing uh, this semester. I guess. Uh, the point of departure for us is to basically try to scrutinize or analyze the definition that uh, Van der Waalt and Fox gave us on project as to what project is. They say a project is any series of activities and tasks that have a specific objective to be completed within specification have defined start and end dates, very important. Uh, basically, that means that uh, the task that has been uh, done, it's, it's temporary. It's not something that you're going to be doing for, for, for wire wire, so we put it you know, in our language. Then have funding limits, very important. Consume human, meaning that it needs people to get it done, and other resources, and are multifunctional. Okay, what we can say basically about this definition, we can extract some few things from it. Number one is that it's a temporary thing. Number two, it should be done as per the specifications of the customer. And specifications basically uh, defines the quality, you know, matrix of whatever that you're doing. And furthermore, you know, we got the budget that is given to us and everything that is done is supposed to be within the limits of the budget that has been given to us. And we need a, a team that's supposed to do the work. And uh, lastly, a project is uh, supposed to get inputs from different functional areas. That is, if ever you are uh, doing a project in, in, in HR departments, you're definitely going to need some people from uh, finance department, you're going to need people, maybe from other departments that can come and, and work with you in that particular project. And secondly, let's look at the definition of project management. Project management, on the other hand, is then the application of knowledge and skills and techniques to execute the projects effectively and efficiently. From that definition, we can then come up with some few statements that explain what a project is. And in this regard, we call them fundamentals uh, um, that are present in all projects. Number one is that projects are one-time efforts. You only do it once, and then it's supposed to be done with it. Projects are unique. Every time you work on a project, you need to understand that it won't be exactly the same as what you've done before. Excuse me. And then projects have limited and control time span that we addressed already. Projects are about change. When you work on a project, they definitely bring change. An example is you know, the building that we're busy uh, with that other side of our school. Once that project is finished, then there's going to be change in terms of the number of students that we take in. There's definitely going to be change, change in so many ways, and even the look outside there, you know, it's going to bring change on uh, uh, VOT. Then projects have defined outcomes. After you worked on a project, you, you're going to have something, a deliverable, that you can say, this is what we have achieved, or rather we, uh, we have produced. And then furthermore, we got um, what is called six most important features of projects. Yeah, they say that uh, any manager or project manager that has uh, managed a project successfully, uh, they know that a project or all projects have got these particular features. Firstly, a project has a defined beginning and, beginning and an end which we already addressed again. Number two, projects require resources. And resources in this regard, we mean people, time, and money 
that have been allocated to the work of the project, and all projects produce a unique outcome, then these outcomes results, or rather results, also have specific goals and objectives of quality and control. Then projects should follow a planned, organized approach to meet their goals and objectives. You don't just do things haphazardly. Number five, a project usually involves a team of people to get it done. It's very important that people understand that they work as a team uh, because if they understand that, then they'll elicit those behaviors that a team should elicit. I want to explain now as to how a team is supposed to work and so forth as opposed to a group. And then lastly, all projects have a unique set of stakeholders who almost always bring differing expectations about the end results of the project. These expectations should be managed for the project to be considered a success. Unless the uh, expectations of the uh, stakeholders are met, even though the project is finished, like it's completed, but we cannot really say it is a successful project. Um, I can come up with a number of examples there, the township, there's this uh, taxi rank that is being completed. It can be used, but it's not actually functional. I guess the reason is that the expectations of the stakeholders were not met. And hence, maybe they were not consulted, basically. Projects, they, have, uh, th they are divided into three components. Number one is the milestones, two activities, three deliverables. Well, milestones and activities sometimes are, you know, used interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. Milestones are seen as the checkpoints. Um, once maybe a, an activity is uh, completed, sometimes they need to basically do some inspection check if everything is done properly and so forth. Then if ever everything is done correctly, then a go ahead can be then given that uh, the next uh, activity can then be tackled. And then an activity is basically the small chunks of work of the project. You take the project and then you split it into activities so that the project becomes manageable. Uh, Basically, I would say those are tasks that one would have to complete so that eventually the project is, um, it gets completed. And then the deliverables are the outputs. It's what we are going to produce at the end of the day. One project can have a number of de uh, deliverables. Example is building a house. A house can have a number of de deliverables. Foundation can be seen as a deliverable. You know, once the walls are built and you're done with them, they can be seen as a deliverable, and roofing itself can be seen as a deliverable. So it's basically the output that we, we produce by doing those activities. And then we got uh, the triple constraint. Every project should be done within these constraints. That is time we don't have, like, you know, many years to complete only one project. And then the cost, like we said, we only got certain budget that is given to you as a project manager. And then we got the scope. What is a scope? A scope is basically the boundaries of activities that's supposed to be done to complete um, that particular project. And then we got the fourth uh, constraint, which was added a little bit later. That is why it is uh, written in red, uh, which is quality in this regard. And what is important for us to take notice of is that every time you change one of these elements, it will influence the other ones, or rather it will impact on the, on the other ones. Think about time. If ever uh, you are working on a specific project or like building a house and you initially were given uh, three months to build and finish your house, and all of a sudden they change, and then they say, no, you need to, to, to do it within maybe a month or so. What's going to happen to quality? 
So definitely quality will be uh, somehow compromised because people will be rushing to complete that particular project or house uh, within the time that you've given them. And what's going to happen with cost? Cost is definitely going to go up because if ever the quality is not good and some of the things you've got to redo, eventually uh, your cost will increase. That is a very important thing to remember is that these elements are interdependent. Changing one, you'll cause the others as well to somehow change. We need to look at the differences between organizational processes and projects. The reason why we need to look at this, because then it will at least help us to see whatever task that is given to us at work, whether it's a project or not. So that if it's a project, then we can you know, um, implement those strategies and methodologies that are used to manage a project. But then what are organizational processes? They say organizational processes are ongoing as opposed to projects. You do the same thing annually, repeatedly. And projects are temporary. They have a defined beginning and an end. Then furthermore, uh, organizational processes, they produce the same output every time. Example would be, let's take a baker uh, that you know, every morning maybe they bake some uh, cakes and bread and so forth. They produce the same thing. It's white bread, it's brown bread, daily they deliver to the shops and so forth. But then when it comes to projects, the, they produce a unique output or deliverable. An example of a project for a baker would be maybe a, um, a wedding cake. If ever they do, you know, um, make them. Wedding cake, you know, the, the people that are, uh, are marrying, they're going to give you some specifications as to the color, the size, the shape, and so forth. So it won't be the same as producing uh, bread on a day-to-day -day basis. And then furthermore, with organizational processes, uh, they have a predefined work assignments. Predefined work assignments, uh, example of size should be your job description, you know, even, you know, before you can hire a person, you know exactly what are the things that this particular person is supposed to do. And then, but when it comes to projects, you have no predefined work assignments and are based on the specific nature of the projects. The reason being, you don't know what will be basically required of you when you work on that particular project. Okay. Another name for organizational processes are basically your work as, you know, as usual. Um, they may be referred to as your ordinary works, you know, like the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we got differences between programs and projects. Um, what are programs? Example that I would use here to to differentiate between uh, projects and programs would be, more especially since we are in South Africa, we all know what is uh, RDP, even though we would say this, those are RDP houses. But RDP is basically, um, what is it standing for? It's the Construction Development Program, isn't it, ne? <laughs> okay. So RDP, when you are to go and build RDP houses, you got a number of projects under this program. You know, um, you're going to have a project of um, constructing roads or streets. You're going to have a project of erecting, you know, a sewer line. And even the project of building the actual houses. So there's a number of projects um, that are actually done under one program. So what are they saying here? They say programs, they have negotiated and broad objectives while projects have predefined and specific objectives as to what exactly you're supposed to do at the time. And then programs, they focus on strategic goals, like RDP, you know, that program is quite strategic. And then uh, the programs, uh, I mean the project focuses on specific deliverables, like we are constructing this particular uh, uh, sewer line system. Then program managers are responsible for various project managers. Like I said, 
you're going to have under RDP, you know, program, you're going to have those managers that maybe are responsible for erecting the sewer system and, and so forth. So those people will be, you know, reporting to the program manager. And then uh, when it comes to projects, uh, project managers act as a responsible persons with specific technical and project related skills. What do they mean here? Is that um, a project manager that would be responsible for erecting the sewer system obviously should be somebody that is quite, uh, quite clued up as to how that system is supposed to be erected. Uh, a plumber, somebody that, I don't know, you know, did something in plumbing or so forth. And then somebody that will be responsible for the actual houses, the brick, you know, brick laying and so forth, it should be somebody that knows how to, to build. Then you got different types of projects. We got, uh, basically these ones are broad categories of projects. Manufacturing projects, like the projects of uh, manufacturing a boat or a ship, a big ship, it's a manufacturing project. Management projects, uh, examples of management projects would be, let's say you want to, um, maybe you want to increase our intake, like here at the University of Students, that is management and then we built maybe an additional class or so forth. That would be example of management projects. Or maybe employing a number of employees that would work on something else. And then we got research projects. Research projects, uh, example of such should be what it's now being done by, I guess, uh, almost every country is busy working on researching on how we can actually combat the pandemic, uh, the vaccine. They're trying to find out what can be used um, to basically make a vaccine to kill this uh, deadly virus. That is a research project. And then we've got a development project. Examples are the houses that we talked about. Okay, again, we need to look at the differences between public and private sector projects. When it comes to public sector projects, the origin of the projects can be traced to specific political directives, policies and strategies of government, while uh, for the private uh, sector, <coughs> projects are aimed at adding value, you know, to, generate, to make more income. Secondly, uh, the, you know, with the public sector projects, uh, the project managers, they, they have far less autonomy and decision-making authority as opposed to their counterparts, which are uh, working for a, pri a, a private sector. Uh, I guess we all know why we're saying that. If you're working for the government, there's so many people that have a say on whatever that you're doing. Okay, there are reasons that would make projects fail. There's quite a number of them. I won't really go through all of them, but I'll just maybe mention a few. The first one, they say, uh, if the project objectives are not clear and are ambiguous, in other words, the people that are working on that particular projects, they are not sure as to what is it that they're supposed to, at the end of the day, deliver. And secondly, the project may fail if it lacks the client or user involvement. It's very important that even though the user is not the client, but it's important that you involve the user because this person is the person that will be using whatever that you're producing. If ever you, you're making um, computers, you need always to find out, you know, you people who's going to be buying from us these particular uh, computers, how would you like, you know, the computers to be structured or with the features and all that? It's very important because then if ever you, you meet the expectations of the user, of the customer or the client, then you show that whatever that you'll be producing will be bought. 
So you can go on and on and on. There's quite a number of them. Um, which ones maybe I can uh, 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 explain? Like for instance, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go to seven, eight. Even number seven. If there is insufficient and poor communication with role players and stakeholders, obviously they won't be sure as to, or rather you won't be sure as to what these people are actually expecting you to, to give them at the end of the day. And if the project costs and time frames are not sufficiently estimated, it's like when you think of building a double store, you think that you'll be needing maybe 200,000 for a double store. Then you start building, and then once you start building, you realize that actually you're supposed to have, uh, you know, organized a million or two million for yourself. Obviously, that particular project would would fail. So it's very important that your estimations are at least very close to the truth because it's, uh, you know, you're estimating. Okay, I won't uh, go through all of these reasons. There are quite many. And then we've got factors that are essential to the success of all projects. Number one, agreement among the project team and stakeholders on the goals and objectives of the projects. It's very important. Secondly, the support from management to supply the resources and to remove organizational obstacles Unless management supports whatever that you're doing, that particular project that you're doing, it's somehow doomed. It's definitely going to fail. Because these people are the ones that are supposed to give you money. They're the ones that are supposed to, to uh, you know, give you members that will be forming the, the project team and so forth. And there could be, you know, organizational obstacles. These people are the ones that are supposed to remove them. And then lastly, communication that is effective, appropriately delivered, and ongoing throughout the project. And um, here, basically, we mean even, you know, meetings that you need to hold with the stakeholders and so forth. They should be ongoing so that they know what is happening, how far you've gone, and so forth, what problems you're facing with, and so forth. Okay. Um, Another thing that we need to basically explain is that uh, we got a number of models that can be used to, you know, when you work on a project. We got basically two broader groups of uh, models. We got the life cycle models and we got uh, maturity mo models. Uh, the one that we're using here is the five phases uh, model. The reason why we decided to use this one because it's, it is more generic. You can use on a number of, of projects. But uh, it's very important that whenever you're given a project to work on, you go and check as to which model will best you know, suit the project that you're working on. OK, this one we got initiation phase, which is where you start thinking, you know, and coming up with uh, estimations um, of cost and so forth of that particular project. Then we got the planning phase, implementation phase, then we got the control phase, even though, yeah, it looks like it's an, you know, uh, a standalone phase. It's actually not a standalone phase as such because control is supposed to be implemented throughout um, uh, the, you know, implementation of the other phases. And then lastly, you got the termination phase. Then you got origins of a project management as a management discipline and a profession. Okay. Rather, because this is history, let me just, okay, let me uh, explain or rather touch the second point. They say in 1969, the Project Management Institute, PMI, was founded which is basically a, a body uh, with which one can affiliate and be a member. Then they say uh, to serve as the global umbrella body to professionalize project management, 
both as a management application and as a field of study. Now, this PMI, that is Project Management Institute, they have three, you know, uh, recognized products. Number one is a guide to project management body of knowledge. I usually call it PMBOK. Then number two, we've got project management professional uh, 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 certification, which is renewed annually. The people that are building houses would uh, somehow uh, attest to this, that it's definitely uh, uh, something that you need to renew on, a, on an annual basis. For instance, like the NHBRC certificate and uh, the third one is International Project of the Year Award. They hold these um, functions and then they can uh, give uh, you know, awards to a project that was well managed um, in that particular year. And then the first product has got these 10 knowledge areas, which are project human resources management. This helps or rather they will help you um, uh, regarding how the, the project team can be managed, then project cost management, managing the budget of the project, then project quality management, project integration management, project time management, and then you've got project risk management, project communication management, project stakeholder management, project uh, procurement management, and lastly, project scope management. All these knowledge areas are found under PIMBO. And um, there's another thing that uh, is very important for people that are working, you know, with organizations to know, is that uh, there are two objectives of organizations. Number one is to survive. You need to survive. By surviving, we mean that you need to adapt every time there are changes and so forth. You need to basically adapt so that you survive in that particular market in which you're operating. Then lastly, we got the, uh, the second objective with which is the ob objective to grow. You want to grow as an, ob uh, uh, an organization. And this objective necessitates the adoption of a project-based approach or management. What is a project-based management? A project-based management, it's a way of managing your day-to-day -day activities as though they are projects. In other words, whatever methodologies uh, that you need to implement when you work on a project, you need to adopt them and use them, you know, uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in your organization. And what necessitates that, you know, to adopt a, a, a project-based approach is because you'll have, to, if ever you want to grow, you'll have to introduce, you know, new products in the market. And you have to introduce new services and so forth, and even improvements, you need to have you know, pro projects that will help you to basically introduce this particular new products that you want to introduce in the market. And then lastly, under learning unit one, we say that you need always to see a project as a system. A system is something that has got, you know, some other subcomponents that are basically forming the system. Here we got um, some few elements that you need to look at when you work on a project. Number one is the macro context, that is the macro environment. Here they say the macro context has got these particular aspects. You got the political environment, uh, social environment, economical environment, or other aspects, technological environment, cultural and legal environment that might impact, could be either positive or negative on the project that you're working on. And then we've got the second you know, element, which are inputs. 
Uh, here we're referring to the resources that you need to produce uh, whatever product that you're working on. Um, example that I can actually come up with here is, let's say you want to produce a product, but the raw material that you'll be using there, it's something that it's not permissible to use, that is the government does not allow you to use such a, a material. Or rather think about a person that wants to, that invents a car that uses leaded uh, petrol. If ever you come up with such a product, obviously that particular project will definitely fail, or rather the car won't be bought because it will impact negatively on the physical environment. All these things you're supposed to take into consideration whenever you think of producing anything new. And then you come to transaction. Transaction, uh, we refer to the utilization of resources through the application of management and even the skills, uh, policies, processes, and technique to produce whatever that you will be producing. It's very important to take notice of that as well because even if you got uh, good quality material, but if you don't have skills or rather your processes are not that good, the output won't be good. That is a product that you'll be producing won't be good. And then you need to look at the output, what the organization produces or renders uh, through the application of the project management. And then the feedback of the customers, how are they basically perceiving the output that you've produced. And um, at the end of the day, you need to, as an organization, you need to look at the outcome after you worked on that particular project, what are the outcomes of working on that particular project? That is, you look at the long-term positive spin-offs of the deliverable. That is, how will it benefit the firm or the society? So that is basically your system perspective of projects. That would be the end of learning.